watching CARE 11 News in high definition. Up next, a gruesome discovery outside Seattle. Plus, Have a good day. don't like grandma's gift? Well, you may face a tougher time in the return line. They told me they don't do any returns. But first, snow, lots of it, and more to come. This is CARE 11 News at 10. Hey, good evening, and thanks for joining us. Mike and Julie are off tonight. Not only did we have the snowiest Christmas in 50 years around here, we're on track to have one of the snowiest Decembers ever. Usually we get a little less than nine inches of snow in December, but this December, we've already doubled that with nearly a foot and a half of snow. And there is more to come, which could make this one of the top 10 snowiest Decembers of all time. So forget about the shoveling for a second, forget about the mess on the roads, and let us tell you who is loving this super snowy December. Carol Evans, Scott Soroka is live to explain. Scott? Uh, Rick, we got that white Christmas and then some lot of snow in December, as you mentioned. It is keeping more than a few businesses more than busy. Not to be in Christmas, it was nice to have a white Christmas. Christmas came early for the folks out at Green Acres Tubing Hill in Lake Elmo. It's been uh, 10 or 11 years straight that we made snow. I was glad we didn't have to pull the snowmaker out. With a 10-inch Mother Nature made base on a 240-foot slide, yes! staff didn't have to spend their usual 150 hours of pumping water to the snowmaker. It saved us probably right around 20,000. So far this month, 17.6 inches of snow. That's eight inches above a normal December. That's better biz for Green Acres. I'm guessing we probably see a 50 or 60 percent increase of, of people coming out when we get a snowfall. Same goes for Snelling Collision. This is the busiest day I've had probably in 15 years. A garage full of aching bodies in need of a lot of work. It's roughly $4,500. This job here is going to be around $9,000. This one here is around uh, $9,500. Bang up business on a normal weekend, the collision crew gets three or four cars in. We've got about 17 cars inside, and I've got about... 20 of them sitting outside. On Saturday alone, the State Patrol reported 323 crashes, 280 cars slid off the road in the metro that day. We've had two more days of significant snow since. Today, one of the busiest body shopping days of the year. Come in early, stay late. Doesn't look like a normal December. Mother Nature has doubled down with snow. You know, those body shops and collision centers are backed up throughout the metro, so one thing the snow hopefully brought with it was a little bit of patience, Rick. Yeah, keep hope alive, huh? Okay, Scott, thank you very much. All right, now, parking those cars. Folks who live in Minneapolis are dealing with their third snow emergency this season. Beginning at 9 tonight, you should not be parking on either side of any snow emergency route until 8 tomorrow morning or until the street is fully plowed. In St. Paul, also beginning at 9, parking is banned on all night plow routes. And as if the ice and slush is not enough, steel beams littered the road in Eden Prairie today. A truck lost its load after losing control on Highway 5 and Ventura Lane. Well, those eye-catching digital billboards could soon be criminal catching. Clear Channel Outdoor Advertising is donating the space to the FBI to show fugitives, bank robbers, missing people, and other high-priority messages. One of the billboard's benefits is how quickly they can be made, in this case, right after a crime is committed. President Bush's signature on a half-trillion-dollar spending bill today is freeing up big bucks for Minnesota. $195 million is earmarked for rebuilding the 35W Bridge. $50 million goes towards security at next summer's Republican National Convention. And $60 million is headed our way for the North Star and Central Corridor rail projects. Well, is your family talking politics this Christmas? With the Iowa caucus just a week away, there is plenty to fuel that debate around the dinner table. Here's Carol Levin's Carla Holt. There's Pat. Taking aim at the first big political prize. Good boy, dude. It's what the 2008 presidential candidates are doing this week, at least one of them literally. These three birds all said they would not vote for me on caucus night. Mike Huckabee's hunting aside, the candidates are stumping for a showdown, now just one week away. I think Iowa has become an extremely big deal. Political uh, analyst Steve Smith says some do believe that with so many states pushing their primaries up, the contests in Iowa, even New Hampshire, won't have the impact they usually do. 
But he says that's theory. Then there's reality, especially in two tight races. We have uh, really a four-way contest on the Republican no, no, side with the top four candidates all within about five or six points of each other in the national polls. On the Democratic side, of course, we have a three-way contest uh, all within uh, a few points of each other in Iowa. Smith says it's not just the leaders that have something to win or lose. It's also the contenders within a margin of error. For Democrats, it may appear a contest between Senators Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. But Smith says a John Edwards win could carry over throughout the country. And he says in the Republican camp, Mike Huckabee, who's often fourth on countrywide polls, could pull off a critical win. I was not about delegates. It's all about who's doing better or worse than expected. It's all about momentum. And momentum and the money that follows it is exactly why Smith and other analysts say Iowa does matter, no matter whether you're east, west, south, or in our case, north of the border. So what can we expect to see this week? Smith says we, and especially Iowans, won't see a lot of negative ads, not with candidates realizing that voters may switch from their number one pick to their number two pick, depending on how their candidate is doing. Smith says it's also possible candidates could drop out of the race altogether by Thursday night, depending on how they fare in the Iowa contest. And of course, all of this means that we could have the largest and longest general election season that we've ever had in this country, Rick. That's uh, going to be something, and it yeah. seems like it has been going on forever, forever. already. Forever, yep. yeah, and it's still several months away, almost a year. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to believe, but it's true. It is. Thank you very much. Hey.